Andreas has always been a, one of the top players in the academy. Beautifully timed challenge again from Andreas Christensen. And my first impressions was this this lad can be a player. He's a Chelsea player through and through. I'm laid back, I'm, I'm not aggressive as a person. He's a great kid, he's got a great attitude. Has he got the experience? Yes. Has he played against some of the best strikers in the world? Yes, he has. I personally feel he could be a, you know, a top, top uh, Premier League player. He's an incredible footballer and one that this club should be very proud of. I'm very happy for him because uh, to play with Chelsea is not easy for a player from academy. Now he's ready to play with Chelsea. I'm laid back, I'm, I'm not aggressive as a person. Um, and I think that kind of, I took that onto the pitch and now, I don't think you ever see me go into a slide tackle that is like reckless or anything. You know, I tried to nick the ball and play. Kind of took him under my wing at a, at a young age, actually. I mean, he's a great kid, he's got a great attitude anyway. So every time he'd come across, he'd kind of pick my brains, the other defender's brains. What I liked about him was that the confidence within him that, he felt he could come and be part of this. When a younger player comes into the group as well, it kind of takes a, a few weeks or a good few sessions for them to be accepted within the group because the standard's so high. Once you get that, wow, this boy can play, that kind of, you know, the green light really from, from within the group, you know, that confidence will just make you, make you grow even more. I think when the scouts first brought Andreas in as a, an under-16, we'd have him in occasionally um, before he could actually sign for us. And, you know, he would have gone from, a, a, from Bromby to looking at a few clubs in England. And my first memories of seeing him was um, really what caught your eye was how uh, kind of natural footballer he was in terms of his reading of the game, his technique, um, you know, his understanding of the game and what a decent lad he was. It's not easy, you, you leave your family, especially my mum, it was tough on her. But you know, for me as a young young boy, you're used to staying at home. If you're bored, you can just call your friends, you want to do something. And in the start, it's tough not to, you know, have that support around you. Here goes Murphy, another very assured piece of defending from Andreas Christensen. And my first impressions was this, this lad can be a player. I liked how composed he was on a ball. He was a lot slimmer in build and a lot more slender than what he is now. And also I liked his personality in terms of his attitude. I felt like he was a guy that come over and was willing to listen, um, take on board a lot of advice from, from players and you can see that he was looking around the more senior boys and, and soaking in how they did things, which I thought was a, a great attribute to have as well, especially when you're trying to learn the game. A little bit quicker than I was, <laughs> but he's, um, you know, very comfortable on the ball. And I think you see that with this, this new generation of players as well. He's very comfortable getting it on the edge of the box, kind of under pressure. He's happy to take and receive the ball. Andreas has always been a, one of the top players in the academy, um, always seen as a, the superstar. But the problem is when you have a su when you're a superstar in the academy, it doesn't always translate to senior football. What we've always done with Andreas when he's been in the, the academy, I mean, he, he came come in as a, an under-17, but within a few days he was training with the under-21s and playing games. So actually, physically, to have him tested playing up a few years is part of our programme back in the academy. But then obviously the next step is to be able to transfer that into the men's game. So for him going on loan and getting that different experience physically, tactically, technically in Germany, um, would have been a huge part of the next part of his development. You just realise at that point you now you're 19 and you don't actually have that much time left to you know take the next step. 
you have the perfect opportunity as you come from Chelsea to you know go somewhere that will actually help you and you know push you even even more. I don't think if I went to a championship and that stuff, I don't think it would work that well out as it would in, in Germany. You get to feel that pressure from from a big crowd, big stadiums, you know, 40, 50,000 every game, and I think that quite helps you. And now when I came back here and you have to be under pressure all the time, you have to perform. Um, that just makes you ready, makes you you're prepared for it. He was prepared to move to a different country, to go to Germany and play in kind of week in, week out at Munchen Gladbach, playing Champions League football, like I said, and getting kind of 80, 100 games under your belt. When you kind of compare him to other, other players of his age group, there's probably not many players who have gone to that level and played that amount of games. So naturally, when you come back here, has he got the experience? Yes, that's another box tit. Has he played Champions League football? Yes, he has. Has he played against some of the best strikers in the world? Yes, he has. He'd done exactly what he needed to do on loan. He had played at the highest levels in the Bundesliga and Champions League consistently over two seasons. Got player of the season in the first season. He went up against Barcelona. I was so proud when I walked away from the stadium. Even though they lost, he was outstanding. Outstanding. And because he reads the game so well. And he, he played with a maturity way beyond his years. Uh, a composure way beyond his years, the highest mark I've ever given on the loan process. He was Chelsea level, simple as that. In training when you come here, I was I was new. Uh, came from just from Germany, you know, a little holiday, and then I had to come straight here. And as you have some, there's quite a lot of faces actually, and then you know you just have to. You feel the. I don't know if it's just me, but I kind of feel like the need for my teammates to accept what I can do on the pitch before I do anything. You know, try to to be something I'm not, so like coming here was just trying to improve myself and to be fair I think I, it was probably my one of the best pre-seasons pre -seasons I've, I've had. To play alongside him is uh, very calm, you know that he, you don't have to bark orders and pull him left, right and here, there and everywhere, you feel that he has a good understanding of his position and the biggest compliment I could probably give him is like when, you, when, when I'm playing with a a young boy who's relatively, you know, new in his in, in his career. That you almost have a feeling you can leave him to do his his role and worry about just what you're doing, which is a huge compliment. As normally, when you play with a young boy, you might be, you know, telling him what position to be in and where to be and to squeeze up and to drop off and and all these things. Whereas with him, you you don't feel that you have to do that. He's very composed on the ball. He's very composed off the ball. The way he reads the game, or he's under pressure, he doesn't seem to panic. Um, he's comfortable in terms of both feet, in terms of his first touch and awareness. I think the fans have seen that he's stepped in against Tottenham, he's stepped in against Man United, and it's like he's been there all his life. He's an incredible footballer and one that this club should be very proud of um, and one that we should hold on to very tightly because he's, he's a player that definitely we could have here for the next 10 years and be another John Terry for me. Uh, and have that kind of same stature because he has got that ability.